Hello peeps, Mr. ATC once again back to you for another idea of housing. And remember a few weeks ago I've showed you Tessa, our recycled TV stand. So today I'm going to be showing you how I'm creating a bigger version of it, Tess. Still using pallet. And the sponsor for this video is Gearbest for providing us with a very nice tool. And I will be giving you more information about this tool and showing you how it works in a few minutes. All right, enough with the talking. Let's go. All right, here are all the pallet wood we're going to be using for this design. And note that all the wood here are coming from a construction site, not very far from this place. And for this design, as I will only need the pallet slot, I'm going to be cutting each of them using my jigs. And at the end you should end up with different pallet slots, as you can see here on the floor, from different colors, different size, different thickness as well, because they are all coming from different pallets. And the two big blocks I'm showing you here are the one I will be using for the legs. Alright, so let's first start with the legs for this design. And in order to create those legs, I will be dividing all the big blocks in two. Then when this is done, I will be moving to my table saw in order to make the cut. And as you all know, safety always comes first. So I will advise you to always use a push stick on your table saw. In order to reduce a little bit the thickness and to clean each side, I will be here using my thickness planner. Then I've decided to round up a little bit the edges because as you can see, they are a little bit too straight here. And to do so, I will be moving to my router table. Et voilà, they are all looking pretty good, with some nice round up edges, and I have to say, a very nice smooth touch. Alright, let's move on. And this time, I'm going to create the frame. To create the frame, we're going to be using some long pieces of lumber, that we're going to be attaching to each other, using the Craig jig. And note that if you're also looking for a way to get your Craig jig, I will be adding in the video description some links for you to get it. It's a very nice tool that can help you to join any piece of wood. Alright, so now it's time to move back to the frame in order to screw them to each other. And here I am, of course, with the two frames, in order to assemble them all. And to have the right measurements, I will be using the legs, in order to have the right dimensions. And to make that cut, I will be moving this time to my mitre saw. First, double checking, of course, always double check, then making the cut and repeating the same thing for the other piece of wood. Then, moving again to my crack jig, in order to create the different holes. And this time, I'm gonna be moving and assembling the entire frame. Then, when the frame is completely assembled, it's then time for me to create the different holes on the side in order to screw the legs. 
Then in order to attach the legs to the frame, I will be placing them flat to the ground, checking if we still have the few centimeters to add the pallets on top. Then when all this is done, I will be attaching them to the main frame. Then turning it upside down to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. Alright, so here we are, all done with the frame and the legs all assembled. And to attach the different pallet slats, I will need to make sure that this frame is as strong as possible. And to make sure of that, I will be adding some pieces of lumber, first on the back at the bottom and on top to move after that to both sides. This part here is pretty simple because I will be using exactly the same process that I've used before, meaning checking the dimensions, cutting the wood and using my crack jig in order to insert them to the frame. This will be for me the best way to ensure that all the pallet slats are properly attached to the main frame. It's always easy and fun to go back to this crack jig. And if you're looking for a nice way to assemble any frame, I will strongly recommend it. Then now that they're all ready, I'm gonna attach them all to the main frame. As you can see it here, it's a very long and painful process. But at the end, this will save me a lot of headaches. Alright, so now I'm all done with all the sides. So now it's time for me to repeat the same process in order to create the different sections. But before that, we're going to be using one more block. And of course the same block that I used to create the legs. And this one is going to be placed at the bottom in the middle. It will be of course attached to the frame and helping to support in case of heavy load. Then this time making a first try to have a look with the different pallet slap. Then using my miter saw I'm going to be cutting each slot with the appropriate dimension. Then I'm going to be tracing the lines in order to know exactly where I'm going to create the different sections. Of course, I will start on the top to move after that at the bottom. Please note that the design is always up to you, so you can place the section anywhere you want. And here we are all ready to place the different slot to cover the entire frame. I will be first starting at the bottom because this will give me a clear view on how I need to place the other slot. Please note that before placing the different slot, you will of course need to add some wood glue all over the frame. Then now, I'm going to be placing the divider section and for this, note that I will be using some wood glue but also my nail gun. And here we are, done with the first side. Then repeating the same process on the left side. Moving on this time on the back side by first adding some glue then, the different pallet slot. Turning it over to complete the back side.
And as you can imagine, I needed to have even more pallets. So I went out to find some more and came back to flatter them all using my thickness plan. Then now it's time for me to finish and move to the top of this design. Which was also a little bit tricky. Because as you can imagine, I needed to find pallets with the same thickness. And we all know how difficult that can be. But at the end, I managed to find enough and clamp a piece of wood on top of the pallets in order to use again my nail gun to attach them all. And note that I'm only using the nail gun to keep them in place. Later on, I will be also using some screws to fix them in their final position. Alright, so now it's time for me to create the doors. I will be of course, again, using pallets, but this time they will be screwed to two pieces of lambers. And for this door design, I've made it very simple. You know, like the old time. Taking some slot of wood, join them together and attaching to the main frame. That's it. To avoid breaking the wood, I'm first here with drilling some holes, then gently adding the screws. And as you can imagine, there is a ton of sanding with this type of design. I first started with my belt sander, to move after that to my roller sanding machine. This machine is very nice because it's helping me to move into all the small corners and sand as much as possible. Then finishing with the back. And to slightly paint and protect the wood, I will be applying several layers of a whitewash paint. Et voila! Look at that! Beautiful, huh? Alright, so now let's move to the final piece, which is attaching the handle in order to open and close the doors. And for this, I will be using some very cheap handles that you can find in any local home store in your area. First, marking the placement for the holes, then drilling. But I've made a small mistake here. So in case you're doing the same design, when you're drilling the doors, make sure that you're opening them. Then screwing this handle in place. And to make sure that the doors are closing well, here, I will be just using some magnets. And remember that if you need to attach something with screws, always remember to pre-drill, especially with this type of wood. There is a lot of chance that if you don't pre-drill, you will break them. Then fixing the piece of metal to the door and we should be all done. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? And mainly using recycled materials. Wow. And to also protect the paint for future use, I will be also applying a thin layer of spray lacquer. And this, of course, all over the design. Look at this. Et voila. And here we are. Finally done. It was a hell of a job. But as you can see, the result is there. And as I was telling you at the beginning, I've been also adding some screws in order to make sure that the slats stay attached. And of course, here I was using the screwdriver from the sponsor of this video, Gearbest. 
So now let's take a look how this tool is working. This is basically the package that I received from Gearbest. And as you can see inside, I have the Bosch screwdriver. So now let's open it to take a look. Inside you will of course find the electric screwdriver, the connection cable, which is here a mini USB, and the instructions to start using it. It's also provided with some screw bit. Behind you will find the connection for your mini USB cable, and also the button to adjust the power. It's actually very small and very easy to handle, as you can see. And this button here will help you to choose in which direction it will be rotating. And the very nice thing with this tool is the fact that you just have to press in order to use it. You just press like this and the system goes on. Alright, let's give it a first try. Okay, the battery is not fully charged. And as you can see, I went a little bit too fast. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna be charging it and wait a little bit in order to use it. All right, let's see. All right, as you can see here, we have three indicators. For the moment, we just have one, but to have it fully charged, we need to wait until the third one is all green. And after a few hours, I was all good. So I can try it again. While I was using it, I realized that I needed to keep it very steady because the wood here is very strong. I have to say that compared to a normal screwdriver, because you can stop at any time the electric screwing mechanism to make it manual like a normal screwdriver. And I realized that when you don't hold it very well, as it's very powerful, it can start turning on itself. Then here, I'm using different screw bits to see if they are all working well. And as you can see, it's exactly the case. So having this tool allows you also to use all the bits you may have. And as you can see, this tool also contributes to create a beautiful design. And when I looked at the design, I realized that I can also add some shelves, which was perfect to give some more storage. Alright guys, I really hope that you like it. It's always a pleasure for me to share those really recycled, refurbished ideas with you. If you would like to receive a free plan, feel free to check out the links that we are sharing with you below in the video description in order to create more awareness and to support us to give you more ideas every week. We will just ask you to share with your friend, share with your family, to help them to see all the beautiful things we can create out of refurbished wood, out of pallet wood. Alright guys, that was it for me for today. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe just right here. Let us know what you think. Comment below. Comment, let me know what you think. And I will see you next time. Mr. ATC, for another idea of housing. See you!